al iman the rusul iman true faith in the messengers and the part of the main text wa arsal allah jami'a rusul mubashirina wa mundirin wa dalil qawlu ta'ala Rusulan mubashirin wa mundirin Lialla yakuna lil nasi ala Allahi Hijjatun ba'da rusul Wa kana Allahu azizan hakima Al-Aya bin Surat al-Nisa He said And Allah sent all of the messengers As bringers of glad tidings And as warners and the proof is his saying, He the Most High. And he calls the ayah from Surah Al Nisa, the fourth surah, ayah 165. With explanation, messengers sent as bringers of glad tidings and as warners, so that the people should have no excuse with Allah after the sending of the messengers. And Allah is ever almighty, all wise. Shaykh Al-Fazan said in explanation, Iman, true faith in the messengers, is one of the six pillars of Iman. The six pillars of true faith. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Al-Imanu an tu'mina billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi he said, Iman is that you truly believe in Allah and in His angels and in His books and in His messengers to the end of the hadith. In a footnote they mentioned this has already preceded and of course this is a part of the famous hadith of Jibreel where Jibreel came and asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to inform him about Islam and Iman and Ihsan and about the signs of the hour. Hadith reported by Al Bukhari as hadith number 50, and Muslim as hadith number 8 and 9 and 10, reported as a hadith of Umar radiallahu an, and as a hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu an. Radiallahu an. <coughs> then Shaykh Bazan said, So Iman, having Iman in the messengers, is one of the pillars of Iman. So it is essential to have Iman in all of the messengers, from the first of them to the last of them. So whoever denies a single messenger, then he is a kafir, a disbeliever in all of them. Just as he the Most High said, وَيَقُولُونَ نُؤْمِنُ بِبَعْضٍ نُؤْمِنُ بِبَعْضٍ وَنَكْفُرُ بِبَعْضٍ وَيُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَأْتَخِذُوا بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ سَبِيلًا أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ حَقًّا وَأَعْتَدْنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابًا وَأَعْتَدْنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابًا مُهِينًا سورة النساء يقول سورة عز 150 to 151 with the explanation Those who disbelieve in Allah and in His messengers want to make a distinction between believing in Allah and in His messengers. And they say, we believe in some of them and we disbelieve in some. And they want to take a path in between that. They are the disbelievers in truth and we have prepared a humiliating punishment for the disbelievers. <coughs> Shaykh al said, So there must be Iman, true faith, in all of the messengers from the first of them to the last of them. Those whom Allah has named from them, those of them whom Allah has named in His book, and those he has not named. For the messengers are many, and therefore there occurs in the hadith that they number 
124,000 prophets and the messengers from them, the Rusul from them were 315 altogether in a footnote they mention the proof for this this proof that gives the, this hadith that gives the number of the Anbiya the prophets as 124,000 and the number of the Rusul from them the messengers from amongst them as 315 the evidence they mention is this hadith reported by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad as a hadith of Abu Umama al-Bahili radiallahu anhu and this report was declared Sahih, authentic by Shaykh al-Albani in As-Sahihah, as number 2668. <coughs> so Shaykh al-Albani straight away he authenticated the wording that the, uh, the Rusul are 315. But that, this chain of narration is authentic, straight away authentic. And he mentioned him, as for the number of the Anbiya, the Prophets, being 124,000, and he mentioned that is also authentic because of, of different chains of narration. There's some weakness in the chain for that number there, but however there are enough chains of narration that together the hadith which mentions the Anbiya prophets being 124,000, that is also authentic. Then Shaykh Bazan finished the section by saying, So there were many messengers. From them were those whom Allah named in his book. And from them were those he did not name. So it is obligatory upon us to have Iman in all of them, from the first of them to the last of them. Then the section continues to say the text of Shaykh al Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, Rahimullah, he continues here <coughs> with regard to Iman in the messengers, and what occurs here on page 287 of this Lebanese. Print, page 223 of the Egyptian print. وَأَوَّلُهُمْ نُوحٌ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ وَآخِرُهُمْ مُحَمَّدٌ صلى الله عليه وسلم والدليل على أن أولهم نوح عليه السلام قوله تعالى إِنَّا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ كَمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى نُوحٍ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ الآية من سورة النساء saying of Shaykh al-Islam, and the first of them, the first one of the Rusul, the messengers, and the first of them was Nuh, alayhi salam, and the last of them was Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the proof that the first of them was Nuh, alayhi salam, is his saying, he the most high. And he quoted the ayah from Surah Al-Nisa, the fourth surah, Ayah 163 With the explanation We have sent you O Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wasallam With revelation Just as we sent revelation to Nuh And to the prophets Who came after him Shaykh Fawzan said In explanation And this explanation goes On page 288 of this Lebanese print Shaykh Fawzan said A dalilu ala anna uwadam nuhun the proof that the first of them was Nuh is his saying he the most high. Inna awhayna ilayk. The beginning of the ayah of the main text with the explanation. We have sent revelation to you. Shaykh Abu said this was an address to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. كَمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ نُوحٍ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ وَالْأَسْبَاطِ وَعِيسَىٰ وَإِيُّوبَ وَيُنُسَ وَهَارُونَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ وَآتَيْنَا دَاوُودَ زَبُورًا The Shaykh completes with the completion of the ayah with the explanation just as we sent revelation to Nuh and to the prophets who came after him and we sent revelation to Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq and Yaqub and to the tribes, the tribes of Banu Israel, and to Isa and Ayyub and Yunus and Harun and Sulaiman 
and we gave the Zabur to, da to Dawood. Shaykh Fawzan said, Allah mentioned a number of their names together in this ayah. You know, a number of the prophets are mentioned here. I mean, prophets and messengers are mentioned here together. Just as he mentioned a number of their names together in the ayah from Surah Al-An'am. وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِهِ دَاوُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانُ وَأَيُّوبَ وَيُوسُفَ وَمُوسَى وَهَارُونَ To the end of the ayahs. The Shaykh just gives the beginning here of this ayah which mentions a list, another list of the names of the messengers. Surah Al-An'am, the sixth surah, ayahs 84 to 86 for the explanation. And from his descendants were Dawood and Sulaiman and Ayyub and Yusuf and Musa and Harun to the end of the ayahs. Shaykh Fawzan said, So the first of them was Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. As proven by his saying, He the Most High. One Nabiyina min ba'di. Ila Nuhin, one Nabiyina min ba'di. And the prophets, with the explanation, and the prophets who came after him, after Nuh. And the prophets who came after him. So this is a proof that Nuh alayhi salam was the first of them. And then the rest of them came after him. Shaykh al said, Allah sent him, Nuh, to his people. When they went beyond the limits, they had ghulu, they went to excess, they went beyond the limits concerning the righteous people, the salihin. After the people had been upon the religion of Tawheed, from the time of Adam, alayhi salam, for ten generations, and they were upon Tawheed, so when the people of Nuh came, there were amongst them righteous people, righteous men. Then when those righteous men died, the people grieved severely for them. So Satan seized the opportunity and said to them, make images of those righteous people and set them up in the places where they used to sit. In order that when you see these images, you will remember their condition. I mean, these righteous people who you loved and respected, who used to learn from, they've passed away now. You're, very, you're, you're, you're grieving over them. So before you forget, before you forget them, make images of them while you still remember. Put these images in the places where they sit, then you'll remember them and remember their, the good they used to be upon. <coughs> Shaykh said, and continuing with what Satan inspired to them, and you will gain enthusiasm upon worship, upon ibadah. So therefore, they made images of those deceased people. They did it. They did what Satan whispered to them. And they set them up in the places where they used to sit. But they were not worshipped. These images were not worshipped to begin with. Because of the presence of ulama, scholars, people of knowledge. Who used to explain Tawheed to the people. And used to criticize shirk. Then, when the ulama, when the people of knowledge died. And the first generation passed away. A later generation came. And the scholars had died. Satan came and said to them, Your forefathers only erected these images in order to worship them. And they used to seek rain near them. So he made worship of them seem to be good. Worship of them besides Allah. He made worship of them besides Allah seem to be something good. So in this way, the shirk came about upon the earth. I mean, the first shirk that occurred on this earth, this is how it came about. Satan whispering to those people when the righteous people passed away. You'll forget them, remember them by making images, by placing them up. You'll be good, you'll encourage you upon worship to the end. And then they, those people died away, next generation, 
Satan whispered to them. But the, your forefathers used to worship these things. And they, that's how shirk came about, through these images. Sheikh said, So Allah therefore sent his prophet Nuh, alayhi salatu wassalam, calling them to Allah, the mighty and majestic, and seeking to return them to Tawheed, which was the religion of their forefather, Adam alayhi salam. However, they were obstinate and haughty. وَقَالُوا لَا تَذَرُنَّ آلِهَتَكُمْ وَلَا تَذَرُنَّ وَدًّا وَلَا سُوَاءً وَلَا يَغُوكَ وَيَعُوكَ وَنَسْرًا Surah Nuh, 71st Surah, Ayah 23, with the explanation that what the people of Nuh, when he called them back to Tawheed, his people said, and the, uh, quote here what they said, and they said, do not forsake those objects that you worship, do not forsake Wad, nor Suwa, nor Yaghuth, nor Ya'uq, nor Nasr. Sheikh Fawzan said, Ibn Abbas said, these were the names, meaning Ibn Abbas, anhuma, famous companion, famous explainer of the Quran, he said, explain this ayah, explain these names here, the names of the idols in the time of Nuh, alayhi salam. He explained what they, what they were, the origin of these names. He said, Ibn Abbas said, these were the names of righteous men. They made images of them and they set them up in their sitting places. And this eventually led them to worshipping them besides Allah. As a side point here, that you can find this narration from Ibn Abbas, reported by Al-Bukhari, has had a narration number 4920. Then Shaykh Fawzan said, So when Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam came to them and forbade them from worshipping them, and he commanded them to worship Allah, they said, Do not abandon those objects that you worship. Do not obey Nuh, but rather continue upon your kufr and transgression and obstinacy. Shaykh Fawzan said, this was the first shirk that occurred upon the earth. And its cause was the images. Asur, those images that were made. And therefore, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna ashadda nasi adaban inda Allahi amal qiyama al-musawwirun. That the people who will receive the severest punishment on the day of resurrection will be those who make images. In the footnote they mention this hadith is reported by Al-Bukhari, as hadith 5950, and reported by Muslim as hadith 2109, as a hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu. As, mean what is, as the people of knowledge mention, what's meant by surah here, images, meaning images of that which... of people and animals having, which have life. And get images of people and animals. And Shaykh Fazam quotes a second narration. He said, and he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَصْنَعُونَ هَذِهِ الصُّوَرَ يُعَذَّبُونَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يُقَالُوا لَهُمْ أَحْيُوا مَا خَلَقْتُمْ And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, those people who make these images will be punished on the day of resurrection. It will be said to them, give life to that which you have created. In a footnote, they mention this hadith is reported by Al-Bukhari, the hadith just after the one that came before, hadith number 5951. And reported by Muslim, this hadith 2108. As the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhuma. Shaykh Fawzan, hafizullah, explains the hadith, he said, They will be commanded to breathe the spirit of life into these images. And this will be a case of ta'jiz, of giving them a command to show their inability and of ta'zeeb. 
and as a punishment for them. And, al- and Allah's refuge is sought. The Sheikh said, because at taswir, because making images is a root from the roots which lead to shirk. Just as happened with the people of Nuh. Just as happened with the people of Nuh. So the first of the Rusul, the first of the messengers was Nuh. As for, and as for the Khatam, the seal, the last one, as for the seal of the messengers and the last of them, then he was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He the Most High said, given the evidence, Shaykh Abbasan quotes evidence for that, he said, He the Most High said, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رَجَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ Surah Al-Ahzab, the 33rd Surah, Ayah 40. With the explanation, Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, but rather he is the messenger of Allah and the final one of the Prophets. Shaykh Razan then quotes an evidence from the Sunnah. He said, and he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, وَأَنَا خَاتَمُ النَّبِيِّينَ لَا نَبِيَّ بَعْدِي I am the seal of the Prophets. I am the last one of the Prophets. There will be no Prophet after me. In a footnote, they mention this hadith is reported by Abu Dawood and the Tirmidhi as a hadith of Thawban, radiallahu anhu. And this hadith was declared sahih, authentic, by Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, So through him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messages from heaven were concluded. So no prophet will be raised and sent after him until the hour is established. However, his sharia, his revealed law, will remain until the hour is established. And his religion will remain until the hour is established, as has proceeded. So whoever claims prophethood after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he is a kafir, a disbeliever. And whoever believes him, then he is a kafir. He is a disbeliever in Allah. Because there will be no prophet after him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If anyone after the prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who claims to be a prophet, he's a kafir. And anyone who believes, anyone who makes that claim, he's a kafir as well. And Shaykh Fawzan said, and many people have claimed prophethood after him. And Allah has exposed them and has made their falsehood apparent. And from the last of them, in what we know, was the, the Qadiyani, Ghulam Ahmad al Qadiyani, the Indian, the one who to begin with claimed to be upon knowledge and worship. Then he claimed that he was Isa ibn Maryam. Then he claimed prophethood. I mean, he, he increased his claim in stages. First, he claimed just to be upon knowledge and worship. Then he claimed that he was Isa. Then finally, he claimed that he himself was a prophet. The Sheikh said, and he now has, of he himself has gone to his destruction, but he has, the Sheikh said, he has followers who, who call themselves the Qadianis. And the Muslims have declared them to be disbelievers, kuffar. And they have shunned them and counted them as being a disbelieving sect outside Islam. And they are a people who are shunned and banished and all praises for Allah from the lands of the Muslims. And they are active. And the Sheikh is indicating they have activities in Da'wah. Even here in Birmingham, you see them in New Street. Standing there on a little table there, these criminals, these disbelievers, pretending to promote Islam. So Shaykh is saying that they are active, they have activities. However, their activities end in failure. 
So in summary, there will be no Prophet after Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whoever claims prophethood after him, then he is a kadhab, a great liar. Just as he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تقوم الساعة حتى يبعث دجالون كذابون قريبا من ثلاثين كلهم يزعم أنه رسول الله Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the hour will not be established until dajjals great tricksters great evil doing tricksters Kadhabun, great liars, are sent. Close to 30. Each one of them claiming that he is a messenger of Allah. 30 Dajjals, 30 great liars. This narration is reported, as I mentioned here, by Al Bukhari, as Hadith 3609, a Muslim after the narration 2923. In the book of Fitan, Trials and Tribulations, as narration number 157, eight, number 84 after that. And it's from a hadith of Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu. Then the continuation of the text, which occurs here on page 291, the saying of Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah, وكل أمة بعث الله إليهم رسولا من نوح إلى محمد يأمرهم بعبادة الله وحده وينهاهم عن عبادة الطاغوت والدليل قوله تعالى ولقد بعثنا في كل في كل أمة رسولا عن عبد الله واجتنب الطاغوت الآية من سورة النحو and every nation Allah sent to it or to put the way around in English, and Allah sent a messenger to every nation from Nuh until Muhammad, commanding them to worship Allah alone and forbidding them from the worship of At-Taghut, everything that is worshipped besides Allah. And the proof is His saying, He the Most High, and He quotes the ayah from Surah Al-Nahl, the 16th Surah, Ayah 36. With the explanation, we certainly sent a messenger to every nation, ordering them to worship Allah alone, and that they should shun, they should keep away from At-Taghut, everything that is worshipped besides Allah. Shaykh Fawzan, Allah, he said in explanation, Al-Mutanabbi'oon, those who falsely claim to be prophets, are many. However, Allah exposes their affair and uncovers them and shows how debased they are to the people. And whoever believes them, then he is a kafir, a disbeliever. And any of these people who claim to be a prophet after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anybody who believes them in that claim, then he is a kafir, a disbeliever. Because he is mukaddib, he is denying the truth of what has been said by Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we just heard the text before. Allah the Most High has made very clear, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made it very clear, that there will be no prophet after him. So if you affirm that there is any prophet after him, you have denied that which is said by Allah. You have denied that which is said by His Prophet. You have disbelieved. You are a disbeliever. The Sheikh said, because that person is denying the truth of what has been said by Allah <coughs> and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the consensus of the Muslims upon the fact that prophethood was concluded with Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then Sheikh Fazan said, he's saying. وَكُلُّ أُمَّةٍ بَعَثَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِمْ رَسُولًا And Allah sent a messenger to every nation. Shaykh Al-Fawzan said meaning. Allah sent a messenger to every nation of mankind. 
in order to establish the proof upon them. So that they will not be able to say, no bringer of good tidings and no warner came to us. And because of his saying, he the most high, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا Surah Al-Isra, the 17th Surah, Ayah 15, with the explanation, we do not punish until we have sent a messenger. Sheikh said, so Allah sent a prophet to every nation from the previous nations. Rather, he sent, he said, he said, rather Sheikh said, Allah sent a messenger, a rasul, to every nation from the previous nations. Just as he, the Most High, said, وَإِن مِّنْ أُمَّةٍ إِلَّا خَلَا فِيهَا نَذِيرٍ Surah Fatir, the 35th Surah, Ayah 24. With the explanation, there was not a previous nation except that Allah sent a warner to them. Shaykh Mazan said, however, it is obligatory that we are aware of what was the call of the messengers. The call of the messengers, all of them, from the first of them to the last of them, was the call to Tawheed. Because of his saying, He the Most High, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا عَنِ اعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُودِ The ayah of the main text, with the explanation, and we certainly sent a messenger to every nation, commanding worship Allah alone and keep away from the worship of At-Tahud keep away from At-Tahud everything, everything that is worship besides Allah Sheikh Fawzan said so everything that is worship besides Allah is Tahud this is a name, a title applied for everything that is worship besides Allah Tahud <laughs> as will follow with regard to the types of the Tawhuds. That from their types is that which is worshipped besides Allah. And He is pleased with that. As will follow. I mean, as will follow in the next section of the book, inshaAllah. The next lesson of the book, inshaAllah. That one of the Tawhuds is that which is worshipped, that, that, that besides Allah which is worshipped and is pleased with being worshipped. Then Shaykh Mazan said, so the meaning of his saying, he the most high, wajh talibu ta'ahud, with the explanation, and shun the ta'ahud, it means, keep away from worshipping the objects of worship, the false, the false objects of worship, and the idols, and the graves, and the tombs, these are ta'ahuds. So the noble ayah proves, that the call of the messengers, all of them, was concentrated upon Tawheed, from the first of them to the last of them. Just as he, the Perfect and Most High, said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدُونَ Surah Al-Anbiya, the 21st Surah, Ayah 25. With the explanation, and we did not send any messenger before you, except that we revealed to him that none has the right to be worshipped except me, so worship me alone. Worship Allah alone. Shaykh Fazan said, and his saying, يُنَزِّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ بِالْرُوحِ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ أَنْ أَنْذِرُوا أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاتَّقُونَ Surah Al-Nahl the 16th Surah, Ayah 2. With the explanation, He, Allah, sends down the angels with the revelation from His command to whomever He wishes from His servants, ordering them, warn the people that none has the right to be worshipped but Me. So therefore fear and be dutiful to Me. Shaykh Fazan said, so the call of the messengers, all of them, was to Tawheed. 
and to singling out Allah the Majestic and Most High with worship and to forbidding shirk. This was the call of the messengers. Then after Tawheed comes the revealed laws with regard to the halal and the haram. Those things that are permissible and those things that are forbidden. After Tawheed, the revealed religious laws come. And the details of the religious laws, or the details of the revealed laws, obviously each prophet, each, each nation having different, a different revealed law. So the Sheikh said, so the, and the details of the revealed laws varied in accordance with the variation of the nations and the needs of the nations. And Allah abrogated from them whatever he wished. And then all of them were abrogated through the revealed law of Islam. The halal and the haram, the lawful and the forbidden. The rulings, the acts of worship, the commands and the prohibitions. As for the foundation, then it is Tawheed. I mean, the, the details of the, of the laws that came to each, each nation, the details will, would vary and would be abrogated one by another. And then finally they were all abrogated by the revealed law sent to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said, as for the foundation of the basic religion, the foundation was Tawheed. Then this did not vary and was not abrogated. This was a single religion. The religion of the messengers, all of them, from the first of them to the last of them, was a single religion. Just as he the Most High said, لِكُلِّمْ جَعَلْنَا مِنْكُمْ شِرَعَةً وَمِنْ هَاجَةً Surah Al-Ma'idah, the fifth surah, ayah 48, in the explanation. And for each people, we lay down a prescribed law and a detailed way to follow. The Shaykh said, And the religion of Tawheed is the worship of Allah, with that which He legislated at each time in accordance with its particular circumstances. But the religion of Tawheed, just to repeat, he said the religion of Tawheed is the worship of Allah. I mean, every time it was the worship of Allah alone and avoiding shirk. Throughout the ages, throughout the, the ages, in accordance with, or at each time, in accordance with the particular circumstances. I mean, the details of each law would, would, have varied, would vary from time to time. But the basic religion was the worship of Allah alone and avoidance of shirk, which did not vary. Then he said, So if a revealed law was abrogated, then the people moved on to the new abrogating law. So whoever insists and remains upon that which is being abrogated and avoids that which abrogates, that which comes newly, then he will be a kafir, a disbeliever in Allah, the mighty and majestic. Because the deen, the religion, which has been abrogated, wiped away and abrogated, will not be religion, will no longer be religion after its abrogation. Rather, it, is, it will only be religion before it was abrogated. So when it has been abrogated, wiped away, then it will not be religion, deen. The religion will, that, will be that which comes later, which abrogates. So therefore, the, reve the revealed law of Islam abrogated whatever came before it from the revealed religious laws. So whoever remains upon Judaism or Christianity after ascending of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he is a kafir, a disbeliever. Because he is acting upon a religion which has been abrogated whose time has come to an end.